Our story is about Sid Kajanu, a spirited young boy who dreams to wield his powers over the world while lurking in the shadows. While most crave the spotlight, Sid harbors a different dream. He longs to become the true mastermind behind it all, pulling the strings and having his machinations drive the entire story. The tale begins with a well-known actress and diligent student named Akani Nishino, who appears friendly with her classmates. However, this friendly demeanor is just a cover to hide her inner anger and bitterness caused by a past incident where a fan kidnapped and molested her. She dislikes everyone around her, especially Minoru Kajino, our protagonist, a classmate who barely acknowledges her and struggles to remember her name. Meanwhile, we see a glimpse of Kajino solely playing the piano in an empty room, showing his lonesome personality. The story takes a turn when Nishino is going home alone and is kidnapped by criminals planning to ransom her. Kajino, disguised as a masked vigilante called Stylish Bandit Slayer, intervenes to save her. The crooks don't take him seriously at first, but their perception quickly changes when they witnessed him rocking dual crowbars, earning him the nickname Balaclava Berserker. He effortlessly takes down the bad guys, setting Nishino free. She can't help but suspect Kajino's involvement in her rescue. A few days later, Kajino's story takes a tragic turn as he's unexpectedly hit by a truck and meets his end. In a flashback, Kajino reveals his lifelong dream of becoming a secret mastermind, pulling the strings from the shadows to protect the innocent. Inspired by fictional heroes, he dedicated himself to martial arts, hoping to one day reach a level of power to overcome even a nuclear bomb. In his final moments, Kajino regrets that no matter how intense his training or determined his efforts, reaching the level of power he dreamed of was practically impossible due to the constraints of physics. His aspirations were hindered, leaving him an ordinary human despite his endeavors. However, in a surprising twist, death opens a new chapter for Kajino. He finds himself reborn in an alternate world, now equipped with magical superpowers. With a renewed sense of purpose, he once again commits himself to manipulating and controlling society from the shadows, adopting the persona of the eminence in shadow. In this alternate realm, Menuru Kajino takes on a new identity as Sid Kajinu. Born to Baron and Lady Kajinu, minor nobles in the kingdom of Midgar, he also has a very talented sister named Claire. Staying true to his past life, Sid in his typical background character persona at day, secretly trains and resumes his vigilante pursuits at night wearing a black bodysuit, eliminating bandits, demonstrating his new slime powers to fulfill his dream of being the mysterious mastermind. This episode shows his great interests in gold as well. Consequently, Sid stumbles upon a peculiar living blob of decaying flesh. After some experimentation, he successfully lifts the curse, revealing the creature's true form of an alluring and captivating elven girl. For his own entertainment Sid, playing the role of eminence in shadow, spins a tale for the elven girl. He convinces her that she's a descendant of legendary heroes who once vanquished a demon named Diablos and a cult is now attempting to revive it. He introduced himself as Shadow with his line. He who lurks in the shadows to hunt the shadows. Hooked on his fabricated narrative, the girl not only believes his every word but also falls head over heels for Sid swearing her undying loyalty. Together, they agree to form a group called Shadow Garden to thwart the cult's plans. Sid nicknames her Alpha, all the while finding amusement in the fact that she wholeheartedly buys into his entirely made-up story. Three years passed, Sid and Claire were training with their swords. Unknownst to Claire, Sid is just playing to be weak. Out of the blue, Claire is kidnapped. Alpha, now leading a group called the Shadow Seven, with members Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, and Eta under Sid's command, tracks down Claire. They discover she's been taken by the real cult of Diablos. Oblivious to the cult's existence, Sid believes the girls are just playing along and has no clue about the actual threat. He leads an assault, thinking they're going after regular bandits, and showing his enormous magical energy, most of the cultists meet their end. Amidst the chaos, Claire escapes, unaware of Sid's involvement, and continues with her plans to join Midgar Academy. Sid, still clueless about the true events, 
gets a surprise when Alpha and the other shadows suddenly announce their departure. The seven shadows scatter across the globe to track down the cult. But Sid thinks they've simply outgrown their role-playing phase with him. Following in Claire's footsteps, he enrolls in Midgar Academy. There, he conceals his abilities and actively avoids drawing attention. Opting for an average life, he befriends two ordinary boys, Skell and Poe. As a penalty for a poorly done test, Sid is compelled to publicly embarrass himself by delivering a fake love confession to the esteemed Alexia, a Migger princess. Embracing his role as a typical background character, Sid goes through with the confession, only to be astonished when Princess Alexia agrees to be his girlfriend. Invited to her fencing class, Sid uncovers a surprising twist that Alexia is engaged to the royal fencing instructor Xenon. However, she harbors no intention of marrying him, and instead plans to employ Sid as a means of getting back at Xenon. Despite being fully aware of Alexia's manipulative and self-centered nature, and the fact that he's being used, Sid decides to play along. In exchange for some cash, he agrees to sustain their fake relationship. Two weeks later, Alexia confesses to Sid that, despite her dedication to sword training, she's never matched up to her sister Iris and got the moniker Fencer Ordinaire. Surprisingly, Sid expresses genuine appreciation for her sword style, centered around mastering the basics. This declaration irks Alexia, prompting her to call off their pretend relationship. The following day brings an unexpected turn of events. Xenon reveals that Alexia has vanished, and Sid finds himself in hot water arrested as the primary suspect in her disappearance. Confined in a cell alongside a mutated human girl, Alexia becomes the target of a cult scientist stealing her blood, claiming that it harbors demon DNA. Meanwhile, Sid endures torture from two knights eager to extract Alexia's whereabouts and make him confess. However, having trained himself to endure pain, the torment proves to be useless. He is even enjoying it. He opts to play the role of a pitiful but innocent NPC, thinking it adds a touch of coolness. After enduring five ruling days, Princess Eris intervenes, ordering Sid's release. In a sudden turn of events, Alpha reappears to Sid, delivering news that the Shadow Garden has been keeping a close eye on the cult while increasing the scope of Shadow Garden's influence and power. Sid finds himself impressed by Alpha and the Shadows, who occasionally drop by to continue their role-playing sessions. Grateful for their continued involvement, he remains blissfully unaware of the true extent of Shadow Garden's existence and influence. Alpha unveils a plan to rescue Princess Alexia, involving 114 loyal soldiers. Sid plays along, amusing himself, thinking it's all part of the game. Little does he know, Alexia's kidnapping is real but he mistakenly believes it's the doing of corrupt knights, and the 114 soldiers are merely background actors hired by Alpha. In a grand assault, Sid takes down the knights who tortured him, while his army actively seeks Princess Alexia. Simultaneously, the cult scientist, in a desperate move, injects Alexia's blood into the mutated girl. This desperate act turns her into a demon. She then swiftly dispatches the scientist and liberates Princess Alexia. While making their escape, Alexia crosses paths with Zeman. Shockingly, he confesses to betraying her to the cult in exchange for a promotion to a high-ranking knight. As Princess Alexia launches an attack, Zenon easily overpowers her in their duel. However, their confrontation is abruptly interrupted by the sudden arrival of Sid, dressed as Shadow. Zenon points the sword at Shadow, attributing the recent attacks on the cult to him and declares himself a core member of the cult. Chaos ensues as the demon girl wreaks havoc in the city, engaging in a fierce battle with Princess Iris. Suddenly, Alpha unveils herself to Iris as a member of Shadow Garden. With a single yet very powerful strike, she defeats the demon and then disappears. In the midst of the turmoil, Sid engages in a duel with Xenon, showcasing dominance and huge difference in strength. Princess Alexia Unaware that Shadow is Sid in disguise, is captivated by his sword style. It resonates with the essence of the style she has long sought in her life, the style of a fencer ordinaire. Aware of his inferiority against Shadow, Xenon resorts to swallowing pills that transform him into a demonic force, enhancing his power. 
However, drawing on the principles of a nuclear explosion he had envisioned, Shadow triggers a magical bomb by uttering the words, I am atomic. The explosion dissolves everything within its radius to atoms, obliterating Xenon and causing extensive destruction to the now evacuated city, leaving behind a massive crater. Reunited with Iris, Princess Alexia is now more determined than ever to master her chosen sword style. With Xenon gone and recalling Sid's admiration for her sword style, Princess Alexia extends a genuine offer to become his actual girlfriend. However, Sid swiftly rejected her proposal, prompting a violent response from her. Alpha, back to her investigative duties, looks into a group posing as Shadow Garden and engaging in criminal activities. Simultaneously, Iris initiates a kingdom-wide probe into both the cult of Diablos and Shadow Garden. With a tool in hand, looking for someone who can decipher its functions is a priority. The imposter Shadow Garden persists in committing murders, causing ongoing chaos. Iris entrusts a recovered cult relic to Sherry, the kingdom's top researcher, with pink hair, to decipher it. Accompanied by his friends Poe and Skell, Sid visits a new department store where he learns that his subordinate, the pretty yet clumsy, as she always trips, Gamma, is the mastermind behind it. The purpose is to generate funds for Shadow Garden, with branches spread across every city globally. Although impressed, Sid remains convinced that Gamma is merely playing a role, unaware that Gamma is now the owner of numerous stores, making him one of the wealthiest individuals in the world. Sid encounters New, the latest addition to the named members of Shadow Garden. Whilst asking for chocolate from Gamma, Sid steals a gold coin in his stash using his slime as if it is not his money. On their way home, sensing something, he made a hilarious way to sneak out of his group with his friends. Posing as Shadow, he witnesses Alexia engaged in a battle against multiple murderers. He steps in, saving Alexia, eliminating the murderers, and leaving one survivor to new for interrogation. Meanwhile, the boss of the murderers, Gaunt Knight, confirms that they have found the relic. Despite Alexia's confirmation that Shadow Garden is not responsible for the murders, Iris maintains that they are enemies of the kingdom. Sid, Poe, and Skell purchase chocolate from Sid's store and decide to try their luck with confessing to girls. Skell's confession takes an unfortunate turn, resulting in him being punished by the girl's fiancé. Poe's attempt ends in arrest, mistaken for a stalker. Opting for a different approach, Sid decides to give the remaining chocolate to anyone. By chance and another coincidence, Sherry becomes the recipient. Ruslan, her adoptive father and vice principal, enlightens the naive Sherry about the chocolates, suggesting they might be a love confession. He encourages her to make a quick decision so as not to keep Sid waiting. He then reminded her that her research, deciphering the relic, is important, but interaction with others is as well. The episode begins with Sherry eating the chocolate given by Sid and pondering with the words her father mentioned to her. The next day, Sid, noticing New trailing him in school, learned about the cult of Diablos and their brainwashing tactics. New shared intel on the Diablos kidnapping cult orphans. Sid realized the Shadow Garden name was bait. Motivated, Sid decided to enter the Bushy Tournament to showcase his role as a background character. Reflecting on her life before becoming a monster, New felt grateful for Shadow's intervention. During the preliminary rounds, Claire won her match, and students bet on fights. Sid's friends, low on money, hoped for his success. The battle between school president Rose and Sid commenced. Determined, Sid aimed to prove his worth as the best ordinary background character, practicing tirelessly. Soon after, Sid initiated his fight strategically allowing Rose to inflict a serious injury by biting a ketchup bag. Unveiling his secret technique, the bloody tornado, he took pride in his perfect background character performance. Surprisingly, Sid stood up again, intending to showcase his remaining 47 background techniques. Despite repeated defeats, he persisted, leaving Rose bewildered. The referee intervened, declaring Rose the winner, leaving Sid disappointed. His friends lost their savings, and Sid harbored hope to display his remaining techniques. Sherry, whom he forgot the name, praised his fight, inviting him for tea and offering homemade cookies. They agreed to start as friends. 
Confused, Sid noticed Professor Lutheran Barnett, a former Bushin Festival champion, shocked that he is Sherry's father. Later, Sid learned Sherry had no friends due to her dedication to research. Lutheran requested Sid to look after her, and he played along. That evening, Sherry planned to visit Sid in the hospital, contemplating Alexia's relationship with him. Amidst enjoying her black coffee, Alexia welcomed Sherry, who revealed her preference for sugary coffee. Sherry, curious about Alexia's relationship with Sid, learned they had broken up, making her ecstatic. Alexia, shocked, discovered Sherry's feelings for Sid and the gifted chocolate. Grateful, Sherry thanked Alexia for the coffee. Five days later, Sid returned to school, continuing his routine while secretly strengthening his grip. Rose, the school council president, surprised to see him again, visited his classroom. Meanwhile, the cult of Diablos activated a magical artifact, shrouding Midgar school in a mysterious barrier. Sherry sensed something amiss. Alexia, back at school, questioned why the gate was closed and discovered a staff member soaked in blood. Sid noticed that his magical power is weakening, and no one noticed it. Masked thugs claimed to be from Shadow Garden, entered the room intending to seize the school, Rose resisted. During the attack, Rose struggled with her magic, due to the artifact activated by the cult. Sid, playing the background character, sacrificed himself to save her, leaving Rose shocked and incredulous. Horrified by Sid's sacrifice, Rose initially believed it was out of love for her. However, she later realized he aimed to prove himself as the perfect background character. Ordered to surrender, Rose felt gratitude for Sid saving her life. All students gathered in the auditorium, serving as hostages. Sid, secretly an overpowered main character, revived himself using magic. Proud of employing his background character technique, the 10-minute death, heartbreak. Though his magic was weakened, he managed to use it. Sherry, unaware of the ongoing attack, learned more about the cult of Diablo's magical artifact. Criminal Rex demanded her pendant, intending to kill her. Vice Commander Glenn intervened, impressing Rex with his non-magical defense. Rex discovered he was fighting Glenn, the Vice Commander of the Crimson Order, prompting Marco to order Sherry to flee. Meanwhile, Sid, observing at the top of a building, prepared for his eminence of shadow performance. Annoyed by the criminal's lack of aesthetic dressing, he vented about his style, and using his slime as a sniper, began eliminating them. Sid noticed a pink-haired girl in the building, realizing it is Sherry. Determined to help, he eliminated the enemies as Sherry planned to reach her father's office. Unaware of the many enemies around, Sid protected her from the shadows. Sherry, aiming to solve the artifact mystery, stumbled on a staircase. Sid caught her, giving her the artifact. Though worried about his injuries, Sid assured he was fine. Sherry discovered the artifact, the Eye of Avaris, is what's blocking their magic. She explained its programming ability and a person with infinite riz still using magic. Sherry proposed a plan to deactivate the artifact, involving a tunnel under the school. Lacking decoding tools, Sid offered to fetch them. Meanwhile, Rex reported about the knights gathering outside but faced his boss's anger for not obtaining the artifact. Warned about defeated members, Rex sought Sherry, only to find his allies missing. Confronted by Sid, Rex activated his ability in a magical barrier but proved no match. Confused and defeated, Rex realized Sid had been toying with him, unable to comprehend the sudden end. Sid reappeared, finishing him off. Shortly afterward, New discovered the defeated Knights of the Crimson Order and sensed her master, Shadow Sid. Sid learned only the Seven Shadows could fight, with Gamma lacking combat skills. Gamma believed they would regain magic soon, and New stated they would stand by until ordered by Shadow. Assisting her master in finding tools, Sid revealed plans to neutralize an artifact, surprising and admiring New for his strategy. Meanwhile, Iris and her knights prepared to rescue the students. Shadow Garden covertly observed the situation, awaiting Shadow's orders. Sherry successfully decoded the magical artifact, revealing a secret way to the school auditorium. As they entered the tunnel, Sherry recalled her mother's murder by Lutheran, who had deceived her into living with him. Grateful for Lutheran's fatherly treatment, Sherry remained hopeful about her father's safety. Meanwhile, a student's attempt to attack the leader was futile, 
and Rose acknowledged the odds against the enemies. A loud noise echoed as a student was shot, prompting fear among the students. Sherry, determined to save everyone, reached the auditorium, witnessing students dying. Activating her magical artifact, she dissolved the barrier, empowering Rose and the students to overwhelm the enemies. Rose, planning to eliminate the leader, encountered numerous obstacles, recalling a masked boy from her past. Shadow appeared, showcasing a beautiful entrance and declaring Shadow Garden's counterattack. The enemies were overwhelmed, and Shadow planned to pursue their escape. The auditorium began to burn, observed by Gamma on the roof. Shadow suspected the enemy leader's involvement and disappeared. Iris arrived, learning Shadow Garden had defeated the enemies. In the tunnel, Sherry searched for her father, while the enemy leader, Lutheran, burned documents. Sid confronted Lutheran, questioning his alignment with an evil organization. Lutheran, suffering from an illness, sought the artifact's potential cure. Sherry's mother, deeming it dangerous, refused, leading to her murder. Lutheran admitted exploiting Sherry, but also desired power. Sid realized Lutheran's motives and intentions. Sid decided they had talked enough and initiated a fight with Lutheran, intentionally losing to showcase his talent as a background character. Returning as Shadow, Luther, unaware of Shadow's identity, activated the magical artifact, hoping to become more powerful. Despite Lutheran's attacks, Shadow easily withstood them. Lutheran, determined, faced the overwhelming power of Shadow, claiming Shadow Garden's reputation was ruined. In the end, Shadow, revealing his true monstrous form, stabbed Luther several times, ending the fight and destroying the dangerous artifact. Sherry arrived, discovering her father's lifeless body. Shadow, choosing not to disclose the truth, anticipated her hatred. Days later, a bounty was placed on Shadow and his organization. Alpha suspected Shadow played the villain to protect the world from the shadows, admiring their leader. At school, Sherry sought Sid to bid farewell, expressing gratitude and revealing her plan to leave the country. Sid wished her luck, and she hoped to know him better. Before departing, Sid inquired about her goals, but Sherry kept it a secret. She left the Migger Kingdom, and Sid sensed her intent for revenge against Shadow. The school lay in partial ruins as an early summer break began, prompting most students to head home. Sid, opting to remain in the capital, aimed to stay hidden from his sister as he pursued a mission of hunting criminals from the shadows. A letter from Alpha revealed his next mission would take place in the sacred land of Lindworm. In the City of Deception, many members of Shadow Garden prepared for their upcoming mission. Epsilon utilized magical slime to change her appearance, recalling guidance from Shadow on its use in the shadows. Meanwhile, Beta was writing a story. Shadow faced off against Idzinan, but this time, Beta was kidnapped. Feeling uninspired for her writing, Beta crossed paths with Epsilon, who candidly shared that Shadow favored her physique. Both Beta and Epsilon harbored crushes on Shadow, leading to a rivalry as they vied to become his wife. Eris and Alexia embarked on a shopping trip to the popular department store in the capital. Iris revealed that she would be a special guest at the goddess's trial, and Alexia intended to buy new clothes for the occasion. Gamma, aware of Alexia's upcoming journey to the sacred land, assisted her in preparing for the trip while subtly observing Alexia's crush on a boy. During their shopping spree, the princesses came across the latest thong collection. Alexia expressed her desire to buy underwear, intending to use it as a secret weapon to win a fight. Initially finding the idea too revealing, Iris was eventually persuaded by Alexia, who ended up purchasing a considerable amount of thongs. The story then shifted to the day the school was attacked. Rose rushed into the school's hospital room and discovered Sid is alive. Overjoyed by his survival and fueled by the realization that Sid had NPC Riz, Rose's feelings for Sid deepened. This unexpected development led to Rose falling in love with him. A few days later, Sid found himself on a train with Rose, and she excitedly mentioned their impending arrival in the sacred land. Regretting his choice of taking the train, Sid reminisced about meeting Rose at the station. Soon, Rose inquired if Sid would participate in the goddess trial. While Rose dreamed of a future together, Sid, being a player with a harem of several women, hesitated. Desiring some space, Sid attempted to avoid Rose, 
even using his Spider-Man powers to hide from her at night. Despite his efforts, Rose persisted. The following morning, as Sid looked at the city in the sacred land, Rose shared a legend about the hero Olivier cutting off the left arm of the demon Diablos. Rose then discovered that her favorite author, Natsume, was having a meet and greet. Learning that Natsume was considered the most talented writer of the century, Sid recognized the stories from his old world and realized that Beta, one of her shadows, is the famous author. Later, Rose showed Sid a personal signing from Natsume, and upon closer inspection, he found a message in Japanese left by Beta. Meanwhile, Alpha planned to uncover the truth about the great hero Olivier, and upon learning that Olivier was hiding something, Alpha anticipated the imminent opening of a mysterious door. While Sid enjoyed the view from the highest point in the city, he suddenly spotted an assassin belonging to the cult of Diablos, and in a valiant chase, he skillfully blocked the enemy's attack with a piece of wood. Epsilon appeared at the site, and Sid inquired about the mission. Epsilon reported the target's elimination by the cult's executioner, and together, they managed to deal with their henchmen. Sid then informed Epsilon that he would proceed with his own plans. The unfolding events promised both excitement and mystery for Sid and his companions. The following day, Sid eagerly anticipated his bath in the hot springs, undressing with enthusiasm. As he soaked in the hot spring, Alexia was shocked to discover her crush, Sid, in the same bath. Ignoring her presence, Sid enjoyed his bath, seemingly unfazed, learning that she was a special guest for the goddess's trial. Alexia informed Sid about the participation of ancient warriors in the event. Despite Alexia's attempt to recruit him into the Crimson Knights, Sid declined. Playfully teasing Alexia, Sid showcased his skills and claimed to be the reincarnation of Johnny Sins, impressing her. In the days that followed, Archbishop Nelson announced the Goddess Trial, attributing Olivier's powers to Goddess Beatrix. Alexia harbored resentment toward Nelson for her futile investigation and noticed men cheering for Beta. Feeling jealous of Beta's perceived relationship with Master Shadow, Alexia confronted Beta. Meanwhile, Rose remained unaware of the brewing tension between Alexia and Beta. The goddess trial began, and Nelson activated a protective barrier, summoning ancient warriors through the sanctuary door. Excitement filled the air as participants geared up to fight against these formidable opponents. As the trial began, Sid overheard background characters discussing the potential for a captivating show as eminence in shadow. The next challenger was called, but no ancient warrior appeared, prompting Sid's anticipation. Sid was unexpectedly announced as a challenger to summon an ancient warrior. Opting for option 3 to avoid punishment, he distracted the audience with a spirit ball, transforming into Shadow, the most wanted man in the kingdom. Meanwhile, Jack's alliance with the Cult of Diablos was revealed in the midst of challenge. Aurora, the Witch of Calamity came out. The fight between Aurora and Shadow began, it became apparent Shadow was no ordinary Dark Knight. Defending masterfully against her attacks, Shadow then defeated her with a single blow, and a magical circle appeared which is a portal to the sacred land. The same magical circle door appeared in front of Sid. He ignored it, but it kept following him wherever he went. With no other choice, Sid entered the magical circle. Meanwhile, Epsilon defeated the church's guards, and Alpha headed for the portal with Delta. Nelson revealed the sanctuary's restricted access, but Epsilon insisted on waiting until the door closed. Suddenly, an assassin attacked her, exposing Epsilon's disguise. Infuriated by the attack, she defeated the enemy. In Olivier's sanctuary, Alpha questioned the resemblance between Olivier and herself. Shadow Garden suspected the cult of Diablos had a hidden agenda, leading them to open a secret door. Meanwhile, Sid and Aurora, having enjoyed their recent fight, decided to work together to escape the magic restrictive prison dimension. In another part of the dimension, Alpha's group reached a laboratory in Olivier's memories, exposing the cult of Diablo's cruel experiments on kidnapped children. Consequently, Sid and Aurora observed a memory where a little girl resembling Aurora was crying. Aurora, dismissive, slapped the girl. Back to Alpha, she explained that Olivier was one of the few compatible with Diablo cells. Alpha disclosed the cult's attempt to implant demon cells into children, and Olivier's mission to acquire Diablo cells. Nelson resisted acknowledging the truth as more memories unfolded, 
revealing Diablo's severed arm causing problems. Powerful artifacts were used to seal the arm. Alpha clarified that the cult sought access to the massive life force of Diablo cells, but their goal failed due to side effects from the pills. They discovered Nelson's involvement in the research team, creating an item with a peculiar name. Alpha pressed for the name, Nelson was forced to utter beads of Diablos. Alpha narrates the flaws in the beads of Diablos while Alexia teased Nelson's baldness. Delta unexpectedly killed Nelson, tossing him in a river while the consumption of beads of Diablos was in discussion. Despite apparent demise, Alpha had doubts of Nelson's survival. Shockingly, Nelson transformed monstrously. In a sudden turn of events, they found themselves teleported to another dimension, separated from Epsilon and the rest of the group. Amidst the chaos, Nelson displayed confidence in his abilities, creating clones of himself. This action irked Delta, leading her to launch an attack on all the clones. Trapped in a white room, Delta easily cuts down Nelson's copies, but soon feels something's off. Nelson explains that the closer they are to the center of the sanctuary, the more their power drains. Alpha figures out that Nelson gains power when closer to the center. While Nelson hoped to reach the core, he feels getting this close is enough to defeat them. Delta is happy just hunting so many prey. Meanwhile, walking through a black void to another memory, Sid and Aurora arrive at a battlefield with many casualties. Sid falls headfirst, cushioning Aurora's fall, and comments on her weight. She retorts that he's imagining things. They find young Aurora crying again, and she takes Sid's sword, wanting to end the memory by killing herself. As she approaches, the dead spring up to attack, but Sid rescues Aurora. Sid notes it's some antivirus reaction, and Aurora explains the sanctuary is rejecting them. Sid wonders what happens if Aurora dies. She guesses she'll return to the first room they met, and both agree it sounds obnoxious. Within the memories of the sanctuary, Epsilon's group encounters a sick person. Chai and Almeida move to defense, but Epsilon approaches. They phase through Epsilon, revealing the person she once was before vanishing. Epsilon explains it's similar to the goddess's trial, a memory reacting and materializing. Her squad is confused and Epsilon clarifies she means the possessed, each recalling their darker days. Later, they find an archive with information about the possessed, realizing it could have happened to them if they didn't meet Shadow. Discovering more than expected, Chi thinks they won't need to keep returning for information. They use Ida's new Mitsugoshi Company product, instant cameras based on Shadow's wisdom, to take pictures of the information. They note the sanctuary core affects their magic, partly destabilizing their uniforms, like what happened at the academy. While Che and Almeida control their magic fine, Epsilon's slime breasts fall off. She retached them, and acted like nobody saw anything. While Sid and Aurora easily defeat the zombies, Sid handles himself well, explaining he's been bodybuilding since childhood. As more zombies keep coming endlessly, Sid apologizes, stating he has to kill young Aurora to end the memory. They reach the center of the sanctuary, finding a heavily chained door behind an ornate magical sword of great importance. Meanwhile, despite ongoing power loss, Delta obliterates Nelson clones, surprising the original as she should be on limited magical power. Nelson asks if she is awakened, but Alpha rebuts the notion, frightening Nelson as more clones are slain. Unleashing his full power and amassing a hundred more clones, Nelson's confidence fades upon seeing Delta charge up her iron slab sword, using it like a wide hammer to multi-kill the clones. Aurora tells Sid they need to destroy the magic core on the other side of the sealed door. Sid's idea to cut the chains is rejected, and Aurora notes there should be a key, the ornate sword with an inscription that it can cut the chains. Sid is sure he can't remove the sword as it sinks into the stone. Aurora sees a sign stating the holy sword can only be drawn by direct descendants. Sid managed to decipher the magical inscription fast. While Sid's efforts leave cracks in the sword's hilt, he states he's well-versed in all standard formulas, surprising Aurora that he memorized countless magical scripts and encryption patterns. With no other way to open the door or an alternative path, the two sit down and wait. In a panic, Nelson then sees Olivier's statue and summons her memory to fight on his behalf. However, a twist occurs as Epsilon emerges, bearing the fruits of the cult's research. 
The shadows, along with Alexia and Rose, swiftly teleport out of the sanctuary, leaving Nelson bewildered in their wake. Within the sanctuary's confines, Sid remains, catching the attention of Nelson, who commands Olivia to eliminate him. The two engage in a duel, but Sid is disheartened by Olivia's mindless obedience, finding the battle lacking in excitement due to his vacant demeanor. In a surprising turn, Aurora steps forward to shield Sid, expressing gratitude for the memories he has bestowed upon her after a millennium of emptiness. Annoyed by the assumption that he might lose, Sid asserts that he has closely observed the sanctuary and unraveled one of its secrets. Olivier, following Nelson's orders, thrusts his blade through Sid's heart. However, Sid responds with a smile, revealing a subtle change in the color of one of his eyes. Sid seizes Olivier and bites her coronoid arteries, swiftly ending her life. This revelation leaves Nelson stunned, as Sid discloses that he deliberately allowed Olivier to stab him in a manner that avoided vital organs. Further unraveling the mystery, Sid shares the secret he uncovered. The sanctuary possesses the ability to absorb magic from the air. By condensing his magical energy into a solid mass within his eye, he regains control over his magic. With a decisive move, Sid initiates his atomic bomb spell obliterating both Nelson and the Sanctuary Corps. As the dust settles, Sid bids farewell to Aurora, who kisses him and imparts a glimmer of hope that he may one day encounter the real Aurora. Meanwhile, Princess Alexia and Rose recognize the need to take matters into their own hands. They decide to establish a clandestine organization, determined to stand against the threats posed by both the Cult and Shadow Garden. Natsume, assuming the role of Beta, agrees to offer assistance, but her underlying motive is to keep a close eye on the unfolding events. Meanwhile, Alpha delves into the Sanctuary's archives and stumbles upon a shocking revelation. Aurora's true identity is none other than the Demon Diabolos. In a different part of the narrative, Shadow Garden undertakes a seemingly innocent venture, acquiring properties in the city of Madlid with the facade of establishing a new shopping center. However, their true aim is veiled in secrecy, as they strive to gain access to a valuable oil field. Alexia, on the other hand, confirms the involvement of the Beatrix Church with the cult. Hindered by political constraints, she cannot delve deeper into the matter. This prompts Iris to set her sights on ascending the ranks of the Crimson Knights, using the upcoming Bushin Festival tournament as a stepping stone to amass political influence. Adding another layer to the unfolding drama, Rose discovers a potential threat within herself that is a potential infection with demonic blood. The highly anticipated Bushin Festival unfolds, drawing in a multitude of fighters to the royal capital. In a surprising move, Sid devises a plan to astound the audience by concealing his true strength. With the aid of magical slime makeup, Gamma transforms Sid's appearance into that of Mundane Man, a destitute and unskilled knight who met a tragic end in poverty. Amid the festival's fervor, Anna Rose, a foreign knight who participated in the goddess trial, observes the disguised Sid engaging in an encounter with a fighter named Quinton on the streets before the official commencement of the event. To her amazement, she witnesses Sid, still in his mundane man guise, deliberately allowing himself to be defeated, all while remaining miraculously uninjured. The revelation leaves Anna Rose in awe of Sid's hidden abilities. Sid gathers intel on the top contenders for the Bushin Festival, discovering that Iris, Rose, Anna Rose, Quinton, and a mysterious Dark Knight without a name are the favorites. Meanwhile, Rose confides in Sid, revealing that her father has chosen a man named Purvashat as her intended fiancé, a decision that threatens to compel her to relinquish her passion for the sword. In response, Sid offers counsel, encouraging Rose to prioritize her own happiness for once. As the preliminary fights commence, Goldie Gilded, a skilled yet irksomely arrogant knight, shares insights with Skell on identifying the likely victors. To Goldie's dismay, mundane Sid's alter ego defies expectations by winning a fight without even moving, leaving the arrogant knight taken aback. Among the spectators, Anna Rose is the only one astute enough to observe that mundane swiftness enabled him to defeat his opponent before the fight officially commenced. The revelation catches the attention of Goldie, who boldly declares Mundane as his next adversary. The following morning brings an unexpected turn of events as the announcement rings out 
that Rose has stabbed Perv and vanished without a trace. That's our recap for today. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, and enable the notification bell.